Hi there, I'm Ali Hargreaves and welcome to my demonstration on how to paint a portrait in hot summer colours. This is actually my husband uh, <laughs> and he was sitting outside a cafe on a very brightly set, uh, set day. The sun was shining incredibly and I said please let me take some photos of you because it's perfect for taking photos of really strong contrast in tone. So we've got the white on the nose here from the light and we've got the really dark on the background. Now I'm going to show you the photograph that I started with which was this one. Now the photograph was actually taken in January so it was quite cold although the sun was shining so he's in a fleece as you can see. On my picture here He's in a t-shirt. So I've changed it because obviously he wouldn't be in a fleece on a very hot summer day. He was wearing sunglasses because obviously of the sun and so that looks summery as well. And I just had this notion that I could show you how to change a photograph from winter to summer by changing what he's wearing but also changing the colours. So you can see we've got these hot summer pinks and reds and yellows and really focuses on him and then we've got the cooler colours in the background that contrast beautifully with the warm ones and makes you look at the warm colours. I've got him slightly offset so he's not right bang in the middle and that's a nice uh, composition so he's there he's looking out I've got the buildings coming in towards him I've added a bit of warm colour here to just bring it together and I've added accents of blue if I bring this closer to you here and here just to link the background in without it I think it would just be too much maybe a little bit more is required so I actually did this first of all and this was um, a quick sketch that I did with black ink using my own homemade bamboo sticks. Uh, I did this as I say back in January. Uh, it was a quick sketch, a tonal sketch, but it's very useful to do this before you actually embark on a painting because this way I can see where all the tones are, the really darks and the lights and I can see where I need to paint those tones in. So a good idea to always do preliminary sketches. In my classes, that's what I always do. I get people to observe their um, topic and really look. It's very important to observe before you even start. So look at the photograph, look at where the darks are, look at where the lights are. What about the line? Can you see any pattern? Can we see any textures in there and how are we going to put them on? I did the textures around here where his whiskers were showing. You know, things like that. So there's lots and lots of things to think about. I've got rid of that lamp post. I wasn't keen on it. It's not necessary. I haven't put it in. In fact, I've put have very little background in here at all just an idea of this crisscross of the window uh, just to give an idea of the lines coming in but that's it so that was an interesting thing to do and something I would always suggest that you do before embarking on a painting so materials I'm using inks acrylic inks I love these because they're so vibrant. They also work like watercolour, but once they're dry, they are completely permanent. And so I can go over them. You know, that's really useful. These are the De La Rowney FW inks. These are my favourites, but I also use Liquitex. And this is one of my favourite Liquitex, the uh, Turquoise Deep. So I've got a lot of different colours. I've got yellow, I've got reds. Uh, lots of different reds. I've got magenta, I've got purple for the darker reds and I've got a couple of luminous colours here. This is luminous pink and luminous orange and uh, I really like those um, but of course that is personal choice as to whether you like using those kind of colours. Uh, and then I've got all the cooler colours, so I've got cerulean blue, I've got um, Prussian blue for the darker ones, and of course I've got the turquoise. And then very importantly, I've got white. This is great, you know, it is opaque, all the colours are opaque with acrylics, and so you can go over things and the white will show up 
over the top. So if I make a mistake like I did here, I felt his neck was too thick. So I've added white on there and I could put more on and then put blue over the top of that. So a great medium to use and I love them. I use them a lot in mixed media work. They're really good for that. I use them with watercolours because they are so exciting uh, to use that way and with acrylic paints. So it's endless, the opportunities there. I'm using a number six round silver brush. Oh no, it's a large detail of that, but I will be using a number six round brush as well. I'm also using the Dela Rowney um, acrylic brushes. I really like these because they're quite stiff and they give me a good, um, they're great for using with acrylics, but also with inks. Watercolour brushes are fine with inks but do make sure that you wash them perhaps more frequently uh, so that the acrylic doesn't go into the bottom and dry out because then it will stop it working as well as it should do. Acrylic ink will dry hard so this is my palette and as you can see here it's cracked that's the white. It does really go solid and dry and that's the end of it once it dries just like acrylic paint and that is why when it dries on here it's permanent. I'm also using a ruling pen this is the SAA ruling pen I love these they look they work like a quill so you've got the gap in between here and you can draw really lovely lines like this with that if you haven't got a ruling pen I often use a barbecue stick I find this a really great tool um, it's really got a good point to it, but you have to keep dipping it more than a ruling pen because it doesn't have the gap to keep the ink in for longer. I'm also using a water spray. I really love these by the SAA and they come in packs of three, a really handy size. As you can see, it fits into my hand and brilliant for taking away or using on plain air. So the first thing is to draw it out and I'm going to show you another thing. So I'm going to actually draw this upside down and show you that technique. There are lots of different ways of drawing and I'm always showing my students different ways of drawing, uh, as you've probably seen before. So I'm going to turn this upside down and draw it that way. It's a rather magical way of doing it because at the end, when you turn it round, it's a really great surprise to see that you've actually got a portrait at the end of it. So I'm just going to stop the video whilst I arrange that. OK, so I've made some space and I'm ready to draw my portrait. And I'm going to, as I say, do it upside down. So the usual thing by observing, looking at the relationship between things, etc, etc. So first of all, I'm looking at the sunglasses here and they go at a line like this. His face is actually at an angle. So I'm just going to put that line on here first and just draw that on. I'm going to do it a little bit larger than it is on here because I want to fill this paper. So I've got the angle there. Just check that again. Yes, probably a little bit more. I knew that wasn't quite right, so I'm just going to uh, change that a bit. This is a B pencil, by the way. I would use a B because it's not too soft and it won't smudge um, when I rub it out, etc. Okay, so that's, that's the angle of the glasses. And of course, they come down around here. Then the angle of the actual face is coming down like this. So I need to just get that on right. So the angle is down here. Now, this is quite a traditional way of drawing um, portraits, which is using angles and lines. You know, it's quite a good way of doing portraits. It's not the only way, but this is what I'm doing. I'm looking at the angles and the shapes. So we've got the glasses here, we've got the nose, and the nose is coming out at this angle. This, by the way, is not the only way <clears throat> to do a portrait. There are lots of different ways. So this is just one of them. So I've got the glasses there that come down here. Then the nose is a little bit shorter than that space. So another line here. You know, this is where the glasses are, they come down to there, and then the nose. <clears throat> There's a line like that. So the nose will finish, 
let's get this right so the nose is coming out here and coming round here so I'm quite that got that right so I need the nose the glasses here so I just need to get this right There we go. I was getting a little bit lost there. So we've got a line here showing at the bottom of the nose, which is less of a distance than the glasses. So the glasses come up here. Like that, the nose comes through here. And I'll put more information in there in a bit later on. It's just getting the main things in at the moment. So where will the mouth go? Well, we've got that distance again. So this distance again to the mouth. So it's about observation. Of course, you can use guidelines with portraits. But the problem with portraits is everyone's slightly different. So you can use it as a guideline, but I wouldn't go absolutely on to the letter of what they tell you in those um guidelines so this comes round that's the edge of the lips this comes across like this at an angle and then down now where is that in relationship to the nose it's just underneath where the nose finishes and then it goes down at an angle so everything in relationship with everything else that nose finishes just under the glasses and then we've got the nostril quite a large nostril there look Again, everyone's different. Everyone has different nostrils. So <laughs> it's important to observe the different shapes of noses and eyes and mouths and all of that thing. So my husband has quite a full mouth. And I'm just drawing the shape here. I can't see the shape of the upper lip. I'm just seeing these dark shadows. That's all I'm doing, the shape of the shadows. The shadow underneath here. And then the chin, it actually comes out beyond that line there. So I need it to come out a bit like that. Just check that note a bit more. It needs to come out more than that. Like that. And then his arm is coming out at an angle. Now, he's wearing a fleece. As I said to you before, I'm going to be adding a t-shirt. So I need to get rid of a little bit of that. I imagine his arm is probably about here coming out. But look at the angle, get the angle right. Just put that angle in. And that is almost as long as the head. So it's gonna go all the way down there before it turns a corner for his elbow. So going back to the face, I then can see the chin comes around at that angle and then the neck is at that angle. All these angles are really important and then I've got a bit of a t-shirt here so I'm going to use that line. That's where the t-shirt would come down. So just put that line on. Look at that gap there. You know that's a really good indicator of shape etc and some lines here coming around the arm okay so that's that then come back to here now i can see that very strong shadow coming from under the nose so i want to put that on comes up here again at an angle you know look at that shape and get that shape on then there's a, a, a very strong shadow under here. This is the thing. The shadows were amazing because the light was so strong. And that was why I wanted to take the photographs. Then we've got the shadow here. Now, let's see how high that is. The forehead here, comparison to there. Let's take it from the middle of the glasses. So the middle of the glasses is here. I'm going to measure that and then measure in comparison here, it's less. So there to there, it's less than that, it's probably about there. And again, an angle. Look at the angle of the top of the head. Yep. Now, 
His forehead comes, or the eye rather, comes from halfway or just about a third of the way on the glasses here. It comes around like a curve and then it comes up. And then again, we've got this very strong angle here. Like that. And then the top of the head comes here, roughly. We've got the hair coming over like that. I'm not going to put too much detail in there. The shadow comes up like that. I'm going to just get the shape of the glasses a little bit more now. Just define that a bit. The glasses come out like that. Round nose. This is the bit I think is actually one of the hardest things to do with the nose. Um, it's actually quite important to get that shape right. Hopefully that is right. The nostril comes out a little bit more, a little bit further than I've got it there. Uh, yeah, and the shadow there. So now we need to get, now it's quite hard to see this, but I think that the top of the glasses goes at that angle. This photograph has got stripes on it because my printer wasn't working very well. Um, so that doesn't help. Right, there we go, like that. Now, the ear, where is that in relationship to everything else? Well, let's just get this angle here and down there for the for the head and let's just see so those are the glasses there that goes once twice and almost three times once twice and almost three times so it's about there where the shadow is or the, the back of the head is so that's important too again it's all in proportion just making sure that everything is in proportion this comes down at an angle like that and then we've got the ear now where is the ear in comparison to everything else well look it's it's more or less on line with the nose let's just see that again <laughs> the top of the nose Yes, about here. And that's the route right. It's where it's resting on on the uh, bar of the glasses. Like that. Um, look at the relationship between the back of the head and the ear. It curves round like that. Where's the bottom of the ear? Look, it's more or less level with the mouth at that angle. And the bottom of Phil's ear comes out like that. Of course, everybody's ears, like their mouths, like their eyes, they're all different. And this is the thing, that's the exciting thing about humans. We're all different. So we need to celebrate those special things. So I'm just looking at the inside of the ear. I can just make out uh, some patterns in there. It's not that easy to see because it's quite dark there. But let's face it, that's why I loved uh, this taking the photograph here because of the strong shadows, the really dark side here. Now it's quite tricky again to see where his neck finished, but I reckon it's about there. Excuse me, it's it's in in the dark there. So the ear is here, and it kind of curves round like that, roughly. I'm just kind of having to guess that bit. Now, this is where it gets exciting. So, when I turn it round, hopefully, I will have a portrait that does look like Phil. Mm, yep, uh, not too bad. So, I'm going to turn it the right way around and just make a few adjustments. Um, yeah, I still think the nose isn't quite right. So, just upturn slightly there and bring it in. Um, his lip needs to come out a little bit more. That's probably overpronounced. I need to add this shadow here that I've forgotten to put on. I'm going to make the t-shirt line. So I've put it about there on here. So let's just do the same there. Bring it out like that. And so I'm making this bit up. You know, the idea of his 
the bottom of his t-shirt because obviously he's wearing a fleece here and it's all rumpled so I've got to kind of guess that a little bit and the arm continues down like this and the elbow and then again look at the angle it's coming down there but that actually isn't that important um look at this gap in this arm that's where it would kind of come in a bit the t-shirt would come around the arm a little bit uh coming down like that and then some lines here and the t-shirt again wouldn't be quite as bulky as that it would be tighter so i'm just going to make more of a gap in between the arm there and the t-shirt then i need to finish off where the t-shirt is going so i'm just gonna make that up as if it's coming around like that i think that probably is a little bit too narrow so bring that over and more on the glasses there oh yes the lines um he has some frown lines here and he might not be happy with that but they're part of phil you know that they're, they're there so uh I think I'm I'm pretty happy with that. So I've got my portrait all drawn out and now we can make a start on the ink. But before that, I just need to rub out the marks that I don't want. So I'm just going to stop the video as I do that. So it's all drawn out. I have made a couple of adjustments. I've changed the neck a little bit and the arm and just fiddled with the nose a little bit. I've rubbed out all the lines. Um, I'm just going to add a couple of lines here just to get the angles right. So I want that street coming in, looking at the angles. This is very dark shadow here. You know, I've got a bit of the street coming in like this. And all these lines converge bringing into Phil's face, which is rather nice. And it's partly why I took the photograph. I was looking at those things. I'm going to put the door on, so some vertical lines here, just to give the idea there, maybe the window at the top here, but I'm not going to, to make too much of that because obviously Phil is the main part of this photograph and he is why I'm doing this picture. Um, no lamp posts, as I said before, I'm not going to add that in. Uh, just get the angles right of the street. And these lines come across like that. It'll just give me an idea, you know, I've got a little bit of a guideline then when I come to paint. Because when I use the inks, I want to be really quite free with them. I want to work quite quickly. So this will help me do that. That's not quite the right angle there that's better okay so i've got all those angles on very light so you can probably hardly see it and just bring that to the camera so you can see what i've done i've just got those odd lines in so the first thing i'm going to do is the background as i said to you before um i've got these hot summer colors for the portrait itself but i've got these really lovely cools to these completely contrast against the warm colours. We've got the warm colours here and the cool colours in the background. So I'm going to start with those to get the idea of the face. From my tonal sketch, I can see that this is a little bit darker than this. This will make this much lighter and stand out, but not too dark because I want those glasses to stand out. So I'm going to use the blues to do that as you can see that's what I've done on here it's light enough that the dark of the glasses stand out against it but dark enough that the light of the nose and the head show up really well so I'll have my photo handy I've already put the inks out but I'm just going to show you a little bit how that works <clears throat> so this is the luminous pink Always shake the bottle really well. Sometimes you even need to give it a stir because the sediment can go to the bottom, especially with light colours like white. I always do this just to make sure that the top is on properly. Otherwise, you can have a bit of a disaster. Unscrew the lid, just 
squeeze the top this acts like a vacuum and then you've got a dropper inside you drop that onto the palette into your well or wherever you want that color to go so here you can see this is luminous pink so it's very strong color and then you're ready to go obviously you need some water and i'll just pop that here and i'm going to use the water i've already filled my water spray as well i've got that handy as well so that can make it really light so i'm going to start with my number six i've actually got um i know i said i was using the saa silver and i love those but these are also really rather lovely the saa imitation sable so i'm going to be using that as well so i've got some cerulean blue here and i'm just going to start now these i'm going to add a little bit of water to it and then i'm just going to go around here now i do need to work quite quickly because unlike watercolors once they dry that's it you will get that line showing up it's already happening here because it's a very warm day right now um so you do have to work fairly quickly they will even dry in your palette fairly quickly so no time for messing i can put water on first and add the ink just as you can with watercolor Again, I need to be quite quick. Look, that's already drying. Amazing, isn't it? Now, I want that to stand out quite well because that's very white on the picture, on the photograph. So I'm just going to make that a little bit darker. And then bring that out. And I'm following the lines that I've got of the street so that they bring me into the picture. Then you get a little bit of Prussian blue. I'm just going to put some lines in here for the window and because it's wet I'm getting a nice smudgy look to it so some lines down here and I say this will dry quite quickly so I need to be careful that it doesn't go mad I can use my spray bottle on here and get a different effect. Look at that. I absolutely love the way that it kind of spiders out. And I'm now going to add some of my turquoise. I love this colour. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. And there's quite a shadow on here. So I'm just making that a little bit darker. And I can afford to because I want the light on the chin to really show up. So I can put that on nice and darkly, maybe a little bit of Prussian blue in there to make it even darker. But I don't want to go mad because I don't want it to detract from the portrait. A little bit of turquoise in there as well, maybe. And I want to have the lines, the grid. I quite like the grid on here, you know, to get some pattern in here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of colour on here and then I'm going to use my ruling pen to just scratch those lines down and it's pulling the colour out. So that gives me a nice subtle look, you know, not too, too much. I can give a little bit more detail to the window maybe just by scratching in. A little bit more of the cerulean blue on there. This is now dried. So this is where acrylic inks are fantastic. That has now dried. I can put a colour over the top and it won't move look. If that was watercolour, it would move. And of course, I love watercolour, as you know, so I'm not saying this is instead. This is just an, another way of doing it. And, you know, that is something that can use to your advantage is the fact that they do dry and you can go over them with a glaze. It won't move again. Yeah, that's it. You know, it works really well. So I'm going to put a little bit of Prussian blue on here to make that a little bit darker. I so I don't want it to be too mad. And then I'm going to bring the colour around here. So 
And I don't want to have any detail on this bit, just the light colour. But I'm varying the tone, so I'm getting dark, dark bits and lighter bits. So I'm using the water really quite quickly because as I say it does dry. I can use the water spray to spread it out a bit more and get some texture in there. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous, the way that that splatters out, really lovely. And then I could do a little bit of splattering, why not? So you get a little bit more texture in there. And a little bit, make it freer. Notice I've left quite a lot of the white of the paper as well. I want that to be light and um, with watercolour and inks, you know, it's the same thing. I would leave that to make sure that um, you've got light in the painting. A little bit more of a line just to get that direction in there. I'm going to use my ruling pen. Just get an idea about a bit more line in there. And that will probably do. Of course, I can come back to it. You know, I could add more. If I feel there's uh, not enough, I can always add more later. I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise in there. Bit, bit of splatter. Splatter <laughs> on there, like that. And the next thing is to show you how we can then add white. So this is white, so I'm going to give it a good shake. And say so with white, sometimes you need to actually uh, move the sediment from the bottom. And I'm just going to put that out in my palette. So if you decided that was a bit dark, you know, you could do something about it. I'm just going to add a few white splatters at the moment because that's all I want on there. And a bit up the top. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. But I could wait that to dry. And if once it's dry, I could go over that with white if I want to, because it's opaque. Right, now, I do want this to dry before I start on the actual portrait. Uh, I'm actually going to add a little bit stronger colour here. I'm going to add a little bit more turquoise around here. I just want that to stand out really well. Because it, it was quite strong in the photograph so that will make it stand out even more there we go so when we go back to the photograph it's not that dark there but i've exaggerated that to make sure that white shows up right as i say all this needs to dry um, really well before putting the next color on So the next colour is yellow. I'm going to use this, this really bright yellow. I think it's actually called bright yellow. Uh, let's look. Brilliant yellow. Yeah, brilliant yellow. Uh, and it is really bright. So I'm looking at the photograph and looking where the lights are. I want to leave white because that's the lightest colour of all. But then I want to have this colour is slightly darker. So I'm going to put this yellow on. I'm going to be quite liberal with it going round here up to the shadow right over all of this now I can see that this has a little bit of a blue taint to it and this is why my water is turquoise and that water is starting to have an effect on the yellow so before i do any more i need some clean water so here we are clean water this is the thing i've got cool colors here warm colors here and if they mix they will become dirty so it's really important to have that clean color that's far better now that's much much stronger so i'm going to go around the glasses and fill all of this in. I'm going to go right behind the ear, over the ear. I'm going to use water to spread that out a bit. 
And just like watercolour, I want to blend that. So I'm using water to make it lighter. I want that bit to be white on his throat, so I'm leaving that white. And I'm leaving bits of white in there as well. I can always cover those later if I want to. Now, whilst that's still wet, just like watercolour, inks will do the same. So this luminous orange will spread out into the yellow. Now, it's actually drying already. It's a very warm day here. Uh, so I'm just going to give it a spray and help that to do the wet and wet thing that I want it to do. I love these luminous colours, but of course they are uh, not everybody's cup of tea. I just love bright colour full stop. <laughs> and then I've got this, which is um, not as bright. This is flame orange, which is a really nice, strong orange. So again, I'm going to go into this. I'm building up the layers, wet and wet at the moment, going around the ear because the ear is actually a little bit lighter than the rest. When I look here, it's not that light, but it's definitely lighter against the dark there. And when I did the um, sketch, you can see I actually left quite a lot of white. You know, this is why a sketch is really useful. So use your sketch as well as your photograph. And this is what I teach you in my lessons. It's not just about painting, it's about observation, it's about drawing, it's about preparing, it's about composition, it's about line, it's about pattern, it's about learning different techniques, learning from other artists, you know, why is this successful uh, and that sort of thing. And learning your own style eventually that's what my lessons are about so if that's what you want to learn come to me <laughs> my lessons are online they're on video you can watch them anytime you like as many times as you like and I offer critiques so I help you along the way and they've been very popular through lockdown I've had a lot of people on my lessons and it's been an absolute joy to get to know these people <laughs> I know some of you are probably watching and thank you for supporting me. Um, so I'm just adding a bit of white here. I will add more, but look, I can see that this needs a bit more white on here. So I'm going over that orange. And this is the great thing about acrylics, which you don't get with watercolour. Uh, you know, it really is quite forgiving. We can change things. So I can see, for instance, that that needs to be really light there against that shadow. I might... Yeah, I think that's okay, actually. But this bit probably needs white later. And I've already gone over it in yellow. So I will let it dry completely. And that will be one of the last um, things that I do. So now I'm going to start adding some reds. I've got this fantastic... Um, what's it called? <laughs> this is Amsterdam. Yes, this is a different make, actually. It's Amsterdam. And this is National Red Deep. So that's a really good, strong, bright red. I'm just going to put that in the palette. I've also got magenta. Of course, those of you who know me, um, I can't go anywhere without magenta. <laughs> so this is permanent magenta. So I'm going to put those that in there. So that is a slightly cooler red against the really warm red. So I'm going to start using this on here and go be quite ruthless now going over these colours but you will notice I'm being quite free with the way that I paint these I don't want to lose that line of the glasses so I'm just going to be quite careful with that bit like that and then go over that so you can see how it's starting to come together And the hair is darker around here.
but there are light bits as well so I need to be aware of that I'm just going to add a little bit of white in there so I remember so you can see that's wet and wet occurring there but it's rather fun so I'm letting it you know bleed out a bit I need some more orange on here And um, this, now this is still wet, so I won't get the sharp Im image that I need. You know, this is the thing about very strong sunlight. You get very strong shadows and you can see the shadow of the glasses on there. So I need that to be really dry before I put that on. At the moment, I'm doing the wet and wet technique. So this is all smudging round. <clears throat> going to put some orange around here so this bit is quite dark around the chin and then this is very definite white against the darker color but then I've got wet and wet happening there so this is a hard edge where I've got wet on dry giving me that sharp image there for the shadow here we've got wet and wet yeah and that gives me a soft a softer look wet and wet soft edge they're all called different things so you've got soft edge and hard edge you've got lost edges which are the soft and hard and found edges which are the ones that are hard edges you know lots of different ways or names for it but it basically is the same thing so the inside of the ear is darker so i'm just adding those bits on there to start defining it so i know where it is this is definitely a lot darker as i say being quite free with the brush put a little bit of yellow in there which is mixing with the white now the lips really quite dark there look it's a very dark tone especially in the corner here it gets a little bit lighter here the top lip is quite tricky to see because the light is so bright there so I need to be careful about that and not paint what I think I see but actually paint what I see and that's a bit of a wet and wet there so if I look back at my drawing this is how I did it on the drawing again it's not that obvious I've got lots of dots and lines here for texture I really like that and that's what I'm going to do now so um this is now dry so that's good I can uh, use it quite easily so I'm going to use the luminous pink to start with to just get a bit of a lighter colour there. Oh, that's a bit dirty. I need to just clean that up a bit. And under here as well. So I'm looking at the photograph all the time. I'm looking at this shape, the shadow of the shape. Or the shape of the shadow even <laughs> um, now I don't think my husband would be too happy to see this it looks like he's got hot pink lipstick on right now so I'm probably going to change that a bit yes I'm going to use that orange flame orange over the top of this calm it down a little bit this bit above here is really dark so I'm going to use the red and I will go over that later, probably with the purple. A little bit of wet and wet occurring around here, which is rather nice. So we've got the wet and wet coming into here. And I'm just going to use the barbecue stick or you can use the ruling pen. I'm just going to put some red ink on there and just put a few dots coming up like this. There's whiskers and a little bit of texture. Oh my goodness, did not mean to do that. Now that's the only thing about quick inks. If you do that, that is very difficult to get rid of. I'm just going to try. So I'm going to use a damp brush like this. 
um, try and block that out. Oh yes, it's working actually. If you're, if you're quick enough, hopefully you can get rid of it. Oh, what a disaster. Right. Not too bad, not too bad. Use a clean paper towel. I use, just used a bit of dirty paper towel there so it's blotted even more colour on. <laughs> so I now need to use some yellow over the top of that. And I'm going to add some white into that. And hopefully that will cover it over and we can go back to it later. Yeah. Whilst I've got this light colour, this is white with the yellow mixed in. So you can mix acrylic inks really well. They work very well like that. And I want to just get some lighter colour hair coming over here. And that works quite well. As you can see against the dark because that's now dry so I can go over it. There's some highlights in the hair here so I can put those on. And it's a little bit wet still on that bit. A little bit over the ear here to get the ear back. Right. Now, it's the same, the top of the nose there, we've got some darker colours, so I'm going to use the flame orange. It's all about tone and shape. I'm getting that very definite shadow there underneath, right across using the tip of the brush on there. And now we're starting to get the shape of the nose. Of course, a lot more needs to be done yet. <clears throat> I'm going to use the luminous pink around here. So again, I'm looking at my sketch to work out where those colours need to go. It's a bit of wet and wet there. Now the glasses are of course very dark, but I'm going to start by putting the red on. I can go over that later with darker colour. I'm being very careful with the tip of the brush to make sure I get that shape in. Because that's the only thing with acrylics, you can't make the same as you with watercolour. You can dab it off quite quickly with acrylic inks as you've seen, it's more tricky to do actually. Um, but you can go over it, that's the thing. So the idea is to get that hot summer feeling and I'm already getting that with these really lovely warm colours. Now at this stage I'm just going to start adding a little bit of colour to the t-shirt. I'm not going to go mad with this because it's not an important part of the picture, his face is. So I'm just going to get the idea of the shirt and just a, a little bit of the colour on there. I'm just going to spray that with water. So using the water spray, oops, I'm just going to need that at an angle a bit. That's better. Yes, I really like that. I'm going to use a little bit of the orange in there to define that. It's still wet, so it's doing that lovely wet and wet thing. There's a bit of a shadow on this bit, so I'm just going to add some darker colour on there. This is all in shadow. A little bit of the luminous pink in there. Oh, look at that. So gorgeous. Absolutely love it. Uh, a little bit more around there, maybe. So that's really nice wet and wet ha occurring there. And whilst I've got those colours, I'm going to add a little bit of that to this foreground. So I don't want it to be all blue there. I want to kind of um, add a little bit of warmth to this colour and the pink because the pink has got a little bit of blue it's a cooler red you know any pink will be cooler it has a little bit of blue in it so that worked quite nicely against the blue I'm going to add a little bit of yellow as well 
nice wet and wet so that it just is quite subtle now look how i can go over the color here you know this is the lovely thing about acrylics that is a brilliant glaze over the top i can still see the blue coming through but it stays because it's permanent it just stays there look at that all sorts of opportunities with acrylic ink really great fun to use i wonder if i'm converting anyone yet <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start some red here to go round the top of the T-shirt, a little bit more and a little bit of shadow here because when I look at the, the sketch I did, that's gone really dark. So again, really quite free, wet in wet. Oh no, I want that to be lighter. So I'm just dabbing that off. I'm going to add some white there. And of course, I've still got darker colours that I can add there. So I'm going to use some Prussian blue here to really make that dark. Look at that. And that blue, it looks black there, but it's actually Prussian blue. And it will just link a little bit, just a little bit with the background here. So I'm going to use this now on the glasses. And if I add that on top of the red, it will work very well to make that very dark colour. I want some of that red showing through, so I'm not going to cover it completely. I do want that dark against the background there, so I'm just adding that in. And whilst it's still wet, I'm going to add some red in again on top of that, and that will make it almost black. Of course, Prussian blue is a very dark blue, and so it's a dark tone colour already. And that's why it makes a good mix for black with the red. A little bit more Prussian blue along the top here. And of course I can highlight that later with white. And then at the same time I'm just going to put that arm on on the glasses and quite dark around the back of the ear here so i'm just gonna add a little bit of that but not too much i don't want to go mad with the blue because i want to keep the warm colors so i need some more of this bright red i'm just going to put some more out in the palette and I'm going to start using the side of the brush to put more of this colour on and start to get the more dramatic. The hair at the back is quite dark. More of the pink in there, nice wet and wet. I need a bit more of that out. I will bring it closer to you so that you can see more closely what's going on with that colour. Look at that lovely wet and wet occurring there. Yeah. bit more of the pink dab that off actually I've gone into too much there so I need to keep looking at this and seeing where the darks and lights are or even better my sketch because I've actually changed things slightly anyway so I need that shadow on there now I need to be careful make sure that those glasses are dry before doing that it's not quite dry enough so i'm not going to go right up to the edge 
that is a shadow underneath. You know, these shadows are what makes it. It's really important to get those right. <clears throat> A little bit of colour coming on the lips here and a little bit of line so a barbecue stick or a ruling pen to just get those lines on there a little bit of texture a little bit more of the whiskers on there and this is where I'm going to start adding an even stronger colour I'm going to be using this purple lake so purple, of course, is in between red and blue because it's made of red and blue. Um, and so it's in a way neutral, <laughs> um, but it's, it's darker. So it's going on here. I'm going to start using this to get some darker tones. So this is purple lake. Really important to get those strong tones in. A little bit of dark around the ear here and inside the ear. Yeah, there's some white under there, so it's actually mixing and making it lighter. So I need to go back to that later. I can see from here I've got some really dark tones there, so I'm just going to add those on top. And I'm going to do it fair, you know, fairly similar way to my sketch because I really like that so I'm putting the colour on like that and then I'm going to get my ruling pan and pull that colour out and that is what I did in my sketch I'm do the same here so I'm going to get some purple lake on there some strong colour and then just use that to get the hair sticking up a little bit. Gives good texture and interest to the painting. Some of you who have followed me before will know I've done this technique with birds, it works really well. <clears throat> And then I need some dark colour on the inside of the mouth here. So be a little bit careful with this. You know, you can see here it's really dark, but I need to get that shape right. It's really important to get the shape. And it starts to define it more. It's starting to show up more. You know, there's dark colour under here as well. And I'm going to use the ruling pen to just put a line coming along there. A nice thin line. So either a barbecue stick or a ruling pen to just bring those lines up on the lips as I did in the initial sketch. The nostrils are very dark so I'm going to go over that with red first I want a nice sharp image so it's wet on dry then I'm going to add some purple lake in there which is wet in wet but because I've already got wet on dry it's a strong shape so that goes in there quite nicely and there's also this bit round here is definitely darker. So going over that too. More red in here. I don't want to lose that pink, I really like it. So I'm just using the brush fairly scribbly in a way. That white is still wet there, so I'm having to be a bit careful with that. Some hot pink, some fluorescent pink on here. Again, I can use the ruling pen to get the hair sticking out a bit, give some nice texture. And 
and you can perhaps see here where when I scratch in it's it's actually producing white scratches into the paint which is also rather nice now I want this neck this light on the neck to really stand out and so I'm going to make the t-shirt much darker again this is all dry so I can get a nice sharp image by going around the chin and down here to the neck like that so I've got that nice strong colour there and then I'm going to add some water to do the lovely wet and wet and now his chin really stands out it's really nice and bright against the background just add a bit of yellow to that just feel it needs to be a bit warmer Have I ever told you that I love colour? <laughs> Can you tell? Right. So this is really quite free. And if you are somebody that wants to be a free painter but finds it hard, it's just practice. It's like anything. You know, you actually need to be able to do the detailed drawings and understand your subject and really get to grips with observation and everything before you can move on to being free. But then follow my tips, come to my lessons. That will also help you. I can show you how to do that. You know, a lot of my students say, I just want to be freer with my painting and I don't know how to do it. And I understand that because when I first started lessons many years ago, that's exactly what I wanted to do. And um, actually really worked it out myself in the end, um, but just by practice and it takes time. Now I want a little bit, of blue in here I just feel we need to accentuate these colors so I'm just going to add a little bit of cerulean blue on the top of the glasses there around there a little bit maybe at the top of the ears not much just a touch just to give the idea of but it's really just to bring in the blue from the background. You just need a touch of it to link it together, but not too much, I don't think. Right, so going back to my sketch, again, I had all this texture in here for the whiskers and everything. So I'm going to add those on now. I just feel it needs to be a bit stronger in, in tone again. So I'm going to add some red first of all. Yeah, that's better. And make that shadow stand out even more. Bit of wet and wet. So adding water to help that blend. A little bit of the pink. Again, lovely wet and wet occurring there, look. Really nice, spreading out beautifully and the merging colours. So, um, whilst that's still wet, I'm just going to dip into there and get that bit of, and dip into the colour in my palette and just add those whiskery bits. even a few around here. A little bit of orange, I think, would be good. And it adds some nice texture as well. So we've got, we've got line, we've got pattern, we've got texture, we've got tone, We've got all sorts, we've got everything in here really. Um, it's all in there. And these are all the things that I teach through my lessons. Now, I need this to be completely dry before I start adding 
the white and just need a bit more white in there and I want to just highlight the glasses a little bit I know I've put some blue on there but I just feel it needs white so it's very important that this is completely dry before I do that I've got a barbecue stick and I've dipped it in the white ink and I'm just going to add a white line around there look how that suddenly stands out and along the top of that one yes I like that now I do feel this needs to be a bit lighter around the nose so I'm just going to use a bit of a line there as well mm. too much a bit more of the luminous pink a bit stronger color under there and now the frown lines Ooh, these are very strong and again that's what is highlighted by the sun the bright sun there so I'm going to be using up oh, this is where I'm going to start using more of a detailer brush this is the uh, system three day Lorani set which I really like for acrylics are great for acrylic painting because they're nice and stiff uh, and you get good control so going to start with a bit of red and pink in here I'm looking at the photograph just to make sure they are in the right place and it comes up from here and there's one around there so I can get some really nice fine lines with this brush and to add some orange luminous orange and there's a bit of darker color here as well and you can see as a little bit of luminous pink too need to finish off this bit under the glasses I think this has been a little bit over top so I'm just going over it with red a bit more of the blue around here maybe And I do feel this needs to be a bit stronger. It'll be more dramatic with darker tones in there. So this is the purple again, the purple lake. And some red. But again, I'm looking at my sketch because I have put highlights there, even though that's dark on the photograph. And I really like the way I did that. So I want to get that back, really. So what can I do? Well, I can dab that off and that's got lighter again. I can even make it very bright by adding some white in there. And this is where you can start adding highlights at this stage if you feel you need more brighter colour. I can add some white on there. It needs a bit, bit of light across there. Yes, as I said to you before, I need to make that lighter, definitely. So I'm just adding white ink over the top of that. And again, it makes it stand out more. So that's great. I like that. I do want to just make this a little bit darker so that's a bit of purple and red 
on there because again the shadow would be coming across you know across here I'm going to use some red right along there so act like a glaze going right across like that bit of purple lake and there we have it a hot summer painting of my husband even though the photo that I used was from the winter. If you would like to join my classes or you want more information just get in touch with me at ali at aliesart.co.uk or visit my website. Details in a moment. So thanks so as promised, here are my details, my email address, ali at alizart.co.uk, the website, the same alizart.co.uk, uh, a YouTube channel, Facebook, alizart, Instagram, Ali J Hargreaves, and of course, tutor for Ready Steady Paint. So here are the details, I hope you get in touch soon. Thanks for watching.